All right. Beautiful morning. It's a little later than I'm usually out. The horizon behind me is light. So I think sunrise is about half an hour away. Let's see if we can get some fish. There's an awesome full moon setting behind, behind the camera, straight in front of me. Looks schmick. See you out there. Yes, gotcha! Happy, happy Yeti! Alright, first drop. Sound is looking pretty good. Sound is looking very good because that's not the reef, so that's cool. Just a matter of holding in the drift. We've got half a squid head dropped down as bait. Let's see what happens. It's just mucking around getting some photos of the moon set behind me. It's pretty cool. I saw that. I saw that on my sounder. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see my bait going down and then the fish coming up to meet it. That's crazy. But the fish doesn't seem to have eaten it, so we just have to wait. <laughs> Gotcha. I don't think it's huge, but decent. It's a good start. That was pretty cool. I like seeing that on the sounder. Funny little sambo. Nearly killed the top. And I on my rod. There we go. Let's get some light on this baby for you. You can see him. It's not super big. Um, given that I want one that's just legal, I might grab out the measure and see if you make it. And if you do, you're going to be dinner. Yeah, it's too borderline. He can go back. Just in case. One little samba. Bye bye. <laughs> yep, he went back. Just pushing back up, keeping the pedals turning, just to hold, sitting on top of it. Here we go, here we go. Oh, lost him. Bugger. All right. Well, while I've got the line up, fishing a little sinker. I use just a straight ring. And today I'm using a single 7.0 circle. I usually use a snell when I'm fishing with scalies. Um, but I thought I'd give the single a go. Just see how it goes. So far, caught one fish and missed one fish, so I guess it's doing all right. Let's go back over that spot. It's just over there. That had barely got to the bottom and it got nailed again, but missed the hook. I'm starting to wonder if I should stick with snails rather than singles. There we go. There we go. That's right, yeah. Good, that, good fish. Go that way. Go that way. That's away from the reef. Oh, he's going back towards the reef now. Yeah. Again, not huge. Probably another similar sandbow to the earlier one. But I'm pretty comfortable calling it as a sandboat. Like this. Call it down there. Water is so dirty. Oh, 
no slightly bigger. It'll be dinner, I reckon. Me thinks. Perfect eating size. See if I can get him in the kayak. Oh, there's another one there too. There's <laughs> his mate. Oh, yep. Beauty. And the sounder is showing off the charts amounts of fish. Keep that one. It's not that much over. Low sixties. Five maybe, but prime eating size. So you're in luck. You finally get your sambo catch and cook. Not a bad start to the morning. Didn't look up. Have another go. Have another go. And another go. Come on. Joy of circles. Just wait for the fish to eat it and swim away. Except when they don't eat it. Yep. This might be a bigger one, I reckon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where's that? I'll be ready. Back there where it's going. Oh, it's going for the reef. Oh, it's really going for the reef. There's going. Ping! You go back to the reef. <sighs> gone, oh, gone at the lead or not? Shame. I wonder if it was actually the leader hit the reef or if it was broken at the lead or not, don't I? Alright, now we do what I said I was going to do and go to the light, yeah. <laughs> that should be fun. Alright, 40 gram jig, 2500 reel, 3 to 6 kilo, dual rod. Um, some would call this silly, I call it fun. There are a lot of fish on the sounder. But the water is very, very dirty, so I don't know if this is actually going to work. I might need to go back to bait with a bit of smell. But I'll give it a few minutes. Alright, so there's no action on the little jig, so I've gone the laziest way of all and just gone to a jig head. I think that's a 1 8th. Can't remember. On a big hook. <laughs> 2 0, I think. And my leader's too short. So, this is probably going to end badly, but let's give it a go. I don't reckon that bait's even hit the bottom and I'm getting bites. Got to get that hook to find its mark. It's going to happen any second. It's going to be on. <coughs> like Donkey Kong, riding King Kong through Hong Kong. If I don't get any bites now, I'll re-rig, put a sinker on. Yes! Yes! Oh, I don't think this fish knows it's hooked yet. Oh, no, there it is. Oh yeah! He's not a monster. There were some bigger ones behind him though. Where's that reef? Uh,
Thank you for our walk, my little doggy. As they say, walk the dog away from the reef. This. Too much at all. The other one. All right. I get it. You don't want to be tailed. You can get a leader instead. Jumbo! There's definitely a big school of them. There are so many on the sounder right now. Let's see if this works. See if we can get another one. <laughs> well, I say bye to this one. Bye bye, little man. Thank you. Toodles. Not bad for a uh, 2500 reel. There's a serious school in there. Like, it's funny, you see them on the sounder when they come up. You bring one up, and there's 30 of them behind it. on the sounder. He's still down there. Put his bait down in front of him. I reckon I'll get another one. Oh, 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 maybe we did. Yes, I did. Got another one. This could be a bigger fish, I reckon. Yeah, this is a bigger fish. Oh my goodness, this is a bigger fish. <laughs> it's definitely a bigger fish. He's gone away, he's gone away from the reef, that's nice. Nice of him. Let's try and let him do that, shall we? Good fish. Thank you for going away from the reef. Oh, there he is. Oh, might be snaps. Don't tell me it's a snapper. No, it's not. It's alright. It's a sambo. Another bow. I love sambos. I really do love sambos. not in very well, is it? Oh. There goes the hook! Hooked out! Let's do this. Nice! Should we ought to get a good frame out of that somewhere? We try and do an underwater release. The water's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna have to go see it. So there she is, out of my just legal 65 odd centimetre fish. I've got two fillets, about 1.3 kilos. Um, and as you can see, it's a pretty nice looking fillet. Um, I've got these extra little bits, which I've taken off the belly flap and then skinned as well. So we're gonna use those for some ceviche 
and I will break this fillet down for you and you can watch as we go. Oh, do you want to see me or do you want to see the fish? We'll turn you up a bit so you might be able to see me. Okay, so I'm just going to do the simplest thing, run along, I've shown you this before, run along the center line, just towards the shoulder side of the pin bones. So then we've got two half fillets. This is our top half, shoulder half. Um, so I'm just going to take a little angled cut across here, nick out a bit of that red meat. Like that. And all that does is take that little bit off. And so then that's essentially our primo shoulder. Again, just coming just past those pin bones. Take that out. Lovely. And I'll do that with the other fillet, but you don't need to watch that. Yeah. All right, so Sambo Catch and Cook, I'm gonna do a couple of different things. I did a ceviche on Saturday night, straight after I caught the fish. That's here. All right, so these little belly bits, uh, they're basically like the, the wings next to the petrol fins. I'm just gonna knock down into nice thin little pieces. Um, we'll just eat those raw as they are pretty much. Maybe I'll chuck a bit of soy on them. And that'll be it. Easy start. Eat that while you're prepping the rest of it. Yum yum. Here comes the little Yeti. He heard that there's some sashimi on offer. A little splash of Sushi seasoning as the vinegar. And a little splash of this horrible dark soy. It's actually really nice, but it makes a mess. Let's turn that over. Now it looks like squid ink fish. I'll leave it for a couple of minutes. And there we go with that. needs a couple of minutes. All right, so for the actual ceviche, I'm gonna go with that half centimeter cube. So just cutting it into strips this way. My Colombian co-worker was very grumpy at me calling it ceviche. It should be pronounced ceviche. Thanks, Rodrigo. And we'll chuck that in a bowl. So I'm gonna get it started on the cure first. So you don't have to put the zest, I like to put it a bit of extra kick. Given that we're only making a little bit, I'll just use a little bit. And juice. I put the whole lime in there, which is a bit excessive for this much fish, but that's all right. Right, so stir that through. Obviously you've got a lot too much juice there, but that's right. So that's started. And while that's happening, I'm gonna dice up red chili, shallot, and chives, and that'll be the majority of our flavor at the end. Yum. So there it is. It's actually not been in that long, maybe 15 minutes. It's curing really fast. So, finally diced shallots, chili, and chives. Ordinarily I'd use coriander, but I'd be the only one in my house that'd eat it if I did that. So I just substituted chives. It's just something to be fresh. So chives, spring onions even, um, mint you could use. 
whatever herb you want really. Um, chuck it in there, mix it through, and that's pretty well ready to go. Um, get out a little bit of sesame to it, that'd be nice. Give it a little bit for that. It's probably too much shallot for that much fish, but that's right. We'll live with it. Sambo ceviche. Mm. And soy sambo, which I added a little bit of lime juice to, which is delicious. Go for it. I made some toasted sandwiches for lunch on Sunday. That's here. All right, so there you go. Because I cut it nice and thin, that fish is easily cooked. I ate it raw last night, wouldn't be worried about eating it raw today anyway. But, toasted sandwich. A perfect Sunday afternoon food. I'm gonna have to try that with some other fish. It's now Monday night. I've still got nearly a kilo of fish. I got 1.3 kilos off a barely legal 65 centimeter sambo. It's pretty good yield really in terms of percentage way better than any demersal you're going to get So check it out. So today I'm going to do Two things at once because I need to use up this fish. I don't want to freeze it I want to use it fresh and two days is where I start going here yeah. um, So you might have seen my skippy video a couple of weeks ago where I sealed some nice chunks, so I'm going to do that with this premium shoulder section here. Just cutting it into thick sections across the grain of the fillet. I'll just do three, yeah that should be alright. So there you go, lovely across the grain. So I'm going to set those three aside. That's going to be my dinner for tonight. I'm also going to use the rest of this fillet, this fillet, and I'm gonna make a Sambo Mornay. So basically like you would make a tuna Mornay, but I'm gonna make it with Sambo. And that way I don't have to be too careful because I don't really care if I break the fish up in the process. If it stays as chunks, good. If it breaks up, doesn't matter so much. I'm also gonna use this bit for that, which is the other belly flap. So there's going to be plenty of fish in it. Um, should freeze quite well after it's cooked. So then that'll go in the freezer for another day when I can't be really cooking. And I'm going to save this last bit here for something very special that I like to call SFC. No, yes, SFC style. Sambo fried chicken style. Um, so you can check that out when I get to that. Just gonna cut it into strips diagonally across the grain. And then I'm gonna put it away and I will cook that tomorrow. All right, so these three bits I'm gonna put into a bowl 
get some olive oil, let them warm up, same as I did with the skippy a couple of weeks ago. You can check out that video if you want to as well. And I will see you in a second. Unfortunately, the SFC style files were corrupted, so I'll have to do that video for you again another time. But shout out to Miley Cyrus Singh and his 5,000 kids for perfecting the recipe for me. Olive oil, veggies, except for the zucchini. You might not want to stand it, Harry, in case it splashes. Zucchini. So my pasta's nearly cooked inside. Um, and while that's finishing off, out here to smoking hot barbecue, like I did with that skippy the other week, just tossing the sambo in some oil and I've added some salt and pepper to that. And then straight on the barbecue, long side down. And it'll be just a few minutes and we'll be taking that off again. All right, so next step, my veggies are all cooked and starting to brown. Dijon mustard. Good whack of that. Add the extra flavor to the pasta, which is just about cooked. Stir, stir. And then we'll add the flour to make it thick. Basic rule is about for this kind of thing, about 80 grams per liter of liquid. Um, I'm going to wing it because, you know, I don't like to measure things. So just plain flour, and I reckon I want about that much. Stir that in, and because I've got enough in there, it basically the flour breaks up across the ingredients that I've got, so you don't get lumps in your sauce. And then I'm going to start by adding some of this pasta water. I want to save some of that water for my other dish with my goujons, my chunks. And then milk. I'm adding cold milk, which is totally against the chefing rules, but I don't care. Pick up all that flavor off the bottom of the pot. Turn that pasta off before it burns because I've now taken too much liquid out of it. Now the thing is our pasta is also going to thicken this sauce a little bit because that will continue to absorb moisture as it cooks. So the sauce can be a little bit runnier than need be. Oh, Got to be quick and we'll turn that one down. Grab the tongs, run outside and turn the other ones over. Quick! It's much easier when you're a chef and you do it all in your one kitchen where you're within arm's reach. Oh no, it's gonna be overcooked. That's right, we just won't give it long on this side. Oh, middle of the barbecue sponge. Gentle, gentle. Right, about a minute on that side, run back inside, do the next step, and then we'll come back and take that off. All right, back inside, scoop that pasta out, nearly all of it. Now I want to keep a little bit of that liquid, as I say, and I'm going to do, I'm just going to cook one portion of the simplest pasta sauce you'll ever make to go with those three pieces of sambo that are out there. Just leave a little bit in there. Pretty much all the pasta in. Stir that through. Like so. Turn it off. Chuck my fish in. Stir that through. Sambo off the barbecue. 
If anything, that's probably a little overcooked. That should be right. Bit of grated cheese. We'll get plenty of that because the kids love it, because it's for kids, yeah. Pour all of that into a big old casserole dish. Grate some cheese on the top for good measure. Banger in the oven. Okay, easiest pasta sauce you'll ever make. Good amount of olive oil, little bit of garlic. Maybe not the easiest, pretty easy. Plastic spoon, hot olive oil, great idea. Three rounds of chili, a little bit of thyme. You don't need the thyme, it's just because I've got it in my garden. Two layers of sage. Work that till you got all the flavour. Cracked pepper. And then that last little bit of pasta and the pasta water in there. And as you work it, the starch in the pasta water emulsifies with the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Emulsifies with, with the olive oil and you create this thick sauce. It needs to come down a little bit more. Just for a few seconds. And that's only because I let that pasta water go cold. Half a wedge of lemon juice. Toss, 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 straight into your bowl. Off. Let's get that out of the way for you. My delicious bits of grilled barbecued sambo on the top. Amber juice. The rest of that squeeze of lemon on the fish. Away you go. Done. Fish, pasta, super simple, one portion, awesome. When the fish is just cooked, so it's not gone to mush, it's not falling apart. And this. I don't know why anybody would complain about the taste because it doesn't taste that much stronger than any other fish I've eaten, so get into it. See you next Tuesday, or on the water.